To assess for a Morton's neuroma, we're going to look at it from the sole of the foot. The first thing is to just identify in transverse section the metatarsals. Now you can see the metatarsals are nice and round, whereas if I move distally, you can see the phalanx is slightly flatter. So that's a nice bony landmark to look for. Now obviously most Morton's neuromas are between the third and the fourth toe in the third web space. So what we need to do is first of all be sure that we're on the right web space. And all we need to do is just to push from the top and you can see this is the third and then this is the fourth here. So that space in between is where we need to look. Now we're going to do a dynamic manoeuvre similar to when you do a moulders manoeuvre to look for a moulders click. So if we just compress we're looking for that tissue that comes out between the two metatarsals. Now if it's a uh, neuroma then it's going to be hypoechoic and non-compressible and often you will also feel an associated click and often the patients will feel that. If it's anechoic and compressible then that's more likely to be a bursitis but often and in fact very commonly they occur together as a neuroma, a bursal neuroma complex. Now we do need to be able to have a look at this in long section as well. So if we just go over uh, the third metatarsal phalangeal joint, we can see the plantar plate, we can see the articular cartilage and also over the top we can see the tendon. So it's important to assess the joint because obviously that is one of the differentials when you've got forefoot pain. Then what we're going to do is we're going to move uh, laterally and we're going to go to the next joint which will be the fourth. Okay and again you can have a look at and interrogate the structures there. If we move back into that intermetatarsal space where there's no bones, then we can sometimes identify the nerve and then we also need to do a compression and we can do that in two ways because again we want to know if this is a neuroma or a bursa. We can compress with the probe or what I find quite useful is I can just compress with my finger and that will give us information whether the lesion that we're looking at is compressible or non-compressible. And that will give us information on whether there's a neuroma, a bursa, or most commonly a bursal neuroma complex. To assess the plantar fascia, with the patient in prone, we put one end of the probe on the end of the calcaneum. Sometimes you have to drop your frequency, ensure you're using a lot of gel. Sometimes you have to use quite a bit of pressure to visualize the plantar fascia. The plantar fascia you can see is a fibular structure coming off the calcaneum. Underneath that you've got your flexor uh, digitorum brevis. Um, and you're looking very carefully for any tears. Uh, so look careful for any discontinuity in the fibular pattern. Um, but also look for any thickening as it comes onto the calcaneum and that would may, may indicate that there's some plantar fasciitis. When we measure it, we generally measure it just at the most distal aspect of the calcaneum. Um, normal plantar fascia varies, normally around four millimeters and you can obviously compare that to the other side. If we go into a transverse section, then what we can do is we can visualize the calcaneum and as I move more distally you can see the plantar fascia coming off the calcaneum. Now most medially you can see the medial calcaneal tubercle with the band on top. Now if we move laterally you can see there is a hyperechoic region here which is the lateral band of the plantar fascia and that follows up on towards the fifth metatarsal. It's important to assess for that, particularly at the calcaneal end, but also follow it down until it attaches on to the fifth metatarsal head there. And it's important to look for a hypoechoic region just proximal to where it attaches onto the fifth metatarsal. If we come back, we can also do a dynamic assessment. So if we go back to the larger band or the thicker band, which is the medial side, if we just do some toe extension, you can see the band tightening up, which obviously relates to the windlass mechanism, which is very important for propulsion. Did you find that video useful? If you did, don't worry, we've got loads more videos for you. You can like our videos, you can make a comment, you can subscribe to our channel to get all of our new videos. 
and you can even join our membership. Good luck scanning.